I'd like to start with Mike German, former FBI undercover agent and whistleblower, who is now a fellow with the Brennan Center. Mike, it's great to have you with us. Um, can you um, talk briefly about how the FBI has come to use informants mainly against, or against mainly Muslim targets in terrorism prosecutions since 9-11 and the um, unfair aspects of how this is being done? Sure. Uh, first, thanks for having me. I appreciate uh, being invited to talk about this important subject. And uh, you know, I spent 16 years at the FBI, and 12 of those years were spent working in undercover operations of one kind or another, but uh, uh, most specifically in domestic terrorism cases, uh, in investigating neo-Nazi and, and far-right militia violence. Uh, and what I saw that led me to, to leave the FBI was that post 9-11, there was a sea change within the FBI about who the FBI should be investigating. And basically, this was accomplished by amending the FBI's guidelines to reduce uh, the amount of evidence necessary to justify investigating somebody. So in the 1990s, I needed to have what was the standard of, of evidence was a reasonable indication of criminal activity to justify targeting any particular individual in the neo-Nazi group. Obviously, uh, hanging out with neo-Nazis, every one of them is saying things I didn't like and sounded dangerous, but I had to have actual facts indicating what type of crime this person was involved in before I could engage them in some kind of criminal activity. So as those standards went down, there was also a, the promotion of uh, a theory of terrorist radicalization that was promoted that also had no factual basis, but the idea behind it is that people have are exposed to radical ideas, become uh, involved in a, a radical organization, and then later on become a terrorist. So if you want to stop the terrorists, you move upstream and target people who are sharing or, or harboring radical ideas. So because of that theory, the sting, the undercover operations moved from targeting somebody who you have a reasonable basis to believe is engaging in terrorist activities to targeting somebody you believe harbors ideas that you think are dangerous. So it's moving away from where there's evidence of criminality. And you know, what we saw develop, and this was after I, I left the FBI, uh, I think was was most prominent in the Liberty City 7 case in Florida, where a group of uh, uh, mostly African, I think all entirely African American men, some were Jamaican uh, immigrants uh, who were not even Muslim. It was it was kind of, I think, reflected the bias that was uh, in the environment at the time. Uh, but they were targeted with an FBI informant who pretended to be part of Al Qaeda, who lured them and encouraged them into a terrorist plot that they thought they were going to get money for. So it was essentially taking people who were not engaged in terrorism. And as the FBI would say, we're just presenting them with the opportunity to become terrorists. And uh, that case uh, took three trials before they won any convictions. Uh, the first two were hung. Uh, but eventually they did win convictions. And I think rather than learning that this methodology was an overreach, what they learned was we have to dress these, case up, these cases up more. So that's when you started seeing uh, you know, very uh, sophisticated explosives being provided, car bombs being provided, stinger missiles being provided, and much larger sums of money being offered to encourage people to participate in, in those kinds of sting operations. Yes, and um, it's very, the, the Liberty City case was very similar to the Newburg 4 case, which I exactly. know more of the details which about, about but they, and they did three years add later, yeah. um, the Stinger missile in there. And, exactly. you know, they, they created the, they structured it so that there were 25 year mandatory minimums. And again, right just like the Liberty City case, all these guys wanted was the money that they were being offered by right. the informants. And, um, and in the Liberty City 7 case, the only weapon the group had was a ceremonial sword. Yeah. And 
so I think that the FBI realized that that was harmful to them. So if they could provide sophisticated weapons that would sit in a courtroom, it would look like a much more dangerous plot, even though it was entirely manufactured by the government. And there's no way in the in the Newberg case, the defendants ever could have obtained a Stinger missile. You know, even the most sophisticated criminal group in the United States can't obtain a Stinger missile uh, with yes. millions of dollars to spend. Uh, so the idea that this group that couldn't rub two nickels together would somehow obtain a Stinger missile absent the, the government intervention is ridiculous. Yeah, and, and in that case, the FBI even told um, the people at Stewart Air Force Base that, oh, you don't have to worry about these guys unless the informant was with them, is with them. And then, of course, you know, right, they, exactly. take down and exactly <laughs> very clear yeah. that the FBI knew that these people were not dangerous on their own, but could be made to look dangerous with by using an, an informant in a sting operation. So so many of these cases, like the, like we've been talking about, is, are really classic entrapment. What you would think of is the definition of entrapment. And yet that defense has never been successful in any of these cases. Can you talk a little bit about that if you're familiar with with how that sure. works? And uh, uh, part of it is that um, I think what what lay people hear when they hear the word entrapment is just that somebody was tricked. Uh, but entrapment as a legal defense is actually incredibly narrow. Uh, the government is allowed to induce somebody to commit a crime so long as they can show the person was predicated to commit that crime. And that predication was that type of evidence prior to the case that I, I discussed that was necessary uh, before 9-11. And the, basically the way the FBI used this radicalization theory, which they would argue in court was accurate, was that, well, if they expressed these ideas or were part of an organization that shared these ideas or if, you know uh, engaged in social media group uh, discussions about these ideas, those ideas are the predication to becoming a terrorist. So instead of evidence of criminal activity, they used just that these people were number one Muslim, that that you know that was the first step to becoming a, a Muslim terrorist was being a Muslim. Uh, right. So it, it created this pool of pre-criminals that they used as predication. Yeah, and I think it's even worse than that in some of the cases like Newburgh and Liberty City because they didn't even have any of those ideas, especially right, Newburgh. exactly they until didn't they even met have any the of those informant. ideas. So what they argued and what they told the jury um, was that if they say anything to try to get the money during this thing, that shows they were predisposed before. That if they right. say, "Oh yeah, I'd like to do this," yeah, thing, that and they shows started that using they this tactic that I found interesting. That that um. It, uh, I, it, it, it's strange, and I, I'm, I'm shocked that uh, judges fall for it. I can understand why juries fall for it, but they do uh, sort of a manhood test, right? Mm -hmm. Where somewhere after they have convinced the person to engage in the plot, they will say to them, hey, you don't have to do this. I'll still be your friend. And But the way, the way they portray that is that, oh, they gave this person an opportunity to step off this path, but really it's more of a manhood test in the way it's applied because it's the leader of the plot who's making this statement, right? So it's like the, the general going, any of you privates want to, you know, go home and not participate in, in the war, go, you know, raise your hand, right? It's, it's not likely going to result in that. And yet they use that as evidence to justify that they were predicated before, which is completely behind when they were induced. 